One of the things that seems on the surface slightly puzzling is that given that the first hominids emerged in Africa and have they had the longest evolutionary period in that Africa, why didn't that part of the world develop into the most advanced civilization? Yes, sir. One of the most puzzling issues in uh, human history, I suppose. Um, uh, Can you state the problem before answering? Yes, yeah, the problem. Yeah, of course. Uh, one might well raise the question of uh, why did material civilization as we know it today did not arise in Africa, given that there is, seems to be uncontrovertible evidence that that is where Homo sapiens uh, emerged and that it spread from Africa to the four corners of the world. And um, I don't think anybody knows the precise answer uh, to that. Part of the answer, of course, is that to some extent it did, that there, are, there is evidence that within Africa um, there's considerable uh, evidence of earlier successes. There, was, there are cities that, are, that, 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 you know, um, that were built there. Um, certainly they knew the use of iron, they uh, developed a large number of tools, um, advanced systems of farming and so on. Uh, it's not that it didn't occur in Africa, it seems to be um, at some point blocked. And uh, uh, one might well raise the question of why it is that if humanity rose in Africa, as there seems to be uncontrovertible evidence that it did, why is it that material civilization as we know it and as we are now enjoying it um, never arose in Africa? A small part of the answer is that to some extent it did, that they, you know, there's good evidence that people in Africa did build cities, did have the use of iron, advanced tools, uh, and so on and so forth. So to some extent uh, Africa is not really the kind of backwater that some popular opinion would have it be. It is true on the other hand that at some point the civilization of the Middle East and of Western Europe, and to some extent even of the Far East, uh, passed it by and developed technological structures far more sophisticated and, and, and far more advanced, perhaps uh, what is appropriate here, uh, than ever emerged uh, in Africa. And clearly Africa's unique ecology had something to do with it. Uh, uh, tropical uh, soils tend to be m much more difficult to cultivate. The absence of a large domestic um, um, animals didn't help. And uh, what's more, there are certain parasitic diseases in Africa uh, that I think held back uh, the ability of people to exert themselves uh, um, in full. But you have to keep in mind that most of the infectious diseases that hit Europe are the kind of diseases that either kill you, or if they don't kill you, you'll recover more or less intact. So smallpox is a good, a good case in point. If you get smallpox, uh, you are uh, either going to die or you are going to fully recover. Perhaps you'll be pockmarked so you wouldn't look as good, but you'd be fully capable of, of doing work. If you get diseases like malaria or um, a variety of parasites that exist primarily in warm, wet, tropical areas, these diseases do not so much kill you as they incapacitate you. And if there's large segments of the population that are uh, suffering from these diseases, there could be sort of an overall decline in energy levels which may impact long-term uh, long economic development. This is to some extent speculation because we don't actually know how much, how prevalent these diseases, these diseases were thousands of years ago. Uh, what is however clear is that the kind of metaphysical attitude that I talked about earlier which is the Judeo-Christian anthropocentric belief of we are in the center of the universe and we are going to exploit it to the bone, that kind of thing doesn't really enter Africa until uh, whites from Europe come to settle it. Now whether that is the one that held Africa back or anything else, I don't think anybody knows. But these I think are fair and reasonable speculations, even though they're not more than that.